Hello YouTube! This is my first inaugural video. I'm going to post on my channel here. Uh, just to introduce myself uh, real quick, I am Rachel. I'm one of the uh, running coaches with a uh, company called Higher Running. And I wanted to come on today to actually do a pretty good little shoe review between two carbon plated shoes, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and the new uh, Nike Alpha Fly 2. And the reason why I'm doing that now is because Houston Marathon is coming this Sunday and this Wednesday as I'm filming this. So I'm still trying to decide between the two shoes and I know that there's been some interest between the two comparing them because Saucony really made some changes between the Pro 2 and the Pro 3 and there was a few subtle changes with the um, Nike Alpha Fly 1 versus 2 and you know I've seen a lot of um, fine uh, YouTube videos uh, comparing the two shoes um, but they've always uh, been men I haven't come across too many uh, women and I think it's a good thing to kind of contribute that if people would like that type of information because you know women run just a little bit differently there's a little bit of body size different the gait mechanics things like that are going to be a little bit different for for a female runner so I wanted to um, share my perspective so to start off let's talk about let's just go through a couple of the tech specs of the shoes so you have an idea of which each are they're pretty there's a lot of similarities they're pretty similar so we'll start off so I haven't shown you the Nike yet this is the Nike Alpha Fly 2 and I got it in very bright orange uh, the color I could get so orange it is so it is a full carbon plated shoe um, you can't see too much of it but the the plates gonna run in there and it has the AirPods, very distinct uh, AirPods. Um, this, uh, their foam, they call it, it's the, the Zoom X foam. So fancy words, everyone's gonna call their foam something different. Um, it's, it's very nice, it's very soft. Um, the tread's pretty substantial. I do think it grips quite well. And they um, kind of give these two long pieces here and not too, too much there for obvious reasons. It can cut a little bit of weight because I mean, you shouldn't be landing at this, this part of your shoe right there. Um, so a lot of your work is going to be done through this pod. So a lot of your energy return, things like that are going to come from the pod. Um, so the heel to toe drop, it is an eight millimeter shoe. So that means there's 40 millimeters of a stack height here to 32 millimeters here. So it's a fairly high stack height shoe and uh, maximalist, lots of foam. It's a soft, good long distance um, running shoe. I wouldn't use it on a track or trying to do a mile race in it necessarily. I think it's good for the, the marathon and potentially the half marathon. Now switching gears and going to the comparison shoe, um, aka my dilemma for Houston. Um, and this one surprised me how close it was going to be. Um, certainly I don't have a you know vested interest in any particular brand. I'll run in whatever so I'm not affiliated with any um, brand including these two obviously so it's my opinion my money that I spent on them so this is the Saucony uh, Endorphin Pro 3 uh, very soft um, and actually stable I was very very happy with the shoe it um, also has a lot of the good tread all the way through so you're gonna get some good grip and durability out of it um, so it has they label it as called an S curve plate that runs through there literally makes a uh, shallow S if you will through the length of the shoe again full length carbon plate well generally speaking be about in that range there and then um, they call their uh, foam the uh, power run PB foam so that's what their name is and you can see how soft it really is when I just press on this um, they really really um, made this much softer than their predecessor the Pro 2 um, I think to the benefit of the shoe the Endorphin Pro 2 is maybe more reactive in a way but this is a lot softer and will protect you through the duration of a marathon so um, good job Saucony I enjoy that same same um, situation as with the uh, Nike is the heel to toe drop uh, is also eight millimeters um, really the stack height there's only half a millimeter between them so whereas I said the heel on the Nike is 40 millimeters it's 39.5 down to 31.5 in the forefoot heel to forefoot and um, now I didn't say the weight yet so that's the one thing I do want to mention there is about an ounce between them that that could be a factor for some if, if you are very weight conscious with the shoes weight forward is you know the number one um, thing you want to 
focus on. This shoe is about seven ounces. I wear an eight and a half. And uh, so this is about seven ounces for me. And then this is closer to eight ounces. Um, but in the comparison of how, how they ran, they both did fine. I, I don't think the weight was too much of a factor for them. So going into that, I want to describe how the shoes fit my feet. Um, but before I get into that, um, I think it's a good idea. I give you a little bit of a background of my running, what paces I generally run and uh, distance, things like that, just so you have an idea of who's doing what in the shoe and how that could maybe relate to you. So I'm a fairly high volume runner overall, um, you know, give or take 100 mile weeks um, for the big weeks. And then I have been training periodically trying to run that magical Olympic trial qualifying pace in some of my tempos, which is like 558, six minute mile pace. So I've done two runs in each of the shoes, um, starting with the Nikes. So I now have some speed and I have some tempo work in each of the shoes. So I did start off doing a track workout in the Alpha Fly 2s and the track, I don't, I don't, that was probably not the best way to grade the shoe and I, I knew that. So it wasn't um, me holding any, anything against the uh, the shoe for being really bouncy and just disconnected from the track because it's not a track running shoe. Um, so that was the first time I ran in those. And then I did a workout where I had uh, two by two mile, I believe it was. And that, those were 1140s, um, so like 550 pace, somewhere around there on, on the road because, you know, where the shoe is going to shine and what it needs to do for me. So I did the workout, it was a two hour long run and it had the, the working part was two by two mile. And I, I liked the shoe, the pod kind of kicked back, gave, gave me a little bit of energy return. I felt stable because it was a one mile round um, box that I did the workout in. So I had to turn, accelerate slightly on a straightaway, turn again and so on and so forth until the workout was done. Uh, found the shoe was very good, very stable. I enjoyed it. Uh, the, the drawback I'm gonna say is, well, I have a kind of a high arch. I think the midfoot area in here pressed was just pressing a little bit into my arch. I don't think it will be a big deal. It might just be a slight irritation by the end of the marathon, but that's just something to consider. If you if you have a, a thicker arch area, you know, of your foot, um, this could could push into that. The Saucony. Um, I did a, what did I do? I did a three mile tempo and then two by a mile, I believe, uh, last week. Uh, similar paces, you know, sub six uh, or thereabouts. And um, it was a little bit shorter long run compared to the Nike Alpha Flies. Really liked, once I figured out the toe off, um, just moving in the shoe, it's just, it's different than the Nike. Um, the shoe really rewards you. If you can, if you can really launch forward and and uh, toe off nicely, this shoe will reward you for it. I definitely um, think there's a great energy return in this Saucony and uh, you know, I, you know, I don't want to um, overstate it, but I, I do believe that it, it's pretty beneficial there. And then um, uh, today, the day I'm filming it, I did a very quick little uh, wake up the legs tune up workout where it was two by a K, um, two by 600 and two by 300. And uh, I thought on the track, I thought that these shoes did really well. Now I had a little bit of a disconnected feeling on the track just because it's it's a maximalist stack tight shoe, uh, not really meant for the track, but um, I kind of was trying to get my body warmed up when I was doing those two 1K repeats. But when I got to the 600s, I felt a little better. Like I was just a little bit more mechanically smooth while I was running, but the shoe was really good too. So I was like, it, it likes it some 530 pace. Uh, not anywhere close to being able to run that for a marathon, but that's more or less what my um, two 600 meter repeats were. So the what I like about the Nike and why I'm having a hard time still, even over a few days out from Houston, I have a little bit of a high arch and I like something at least touching my arch. I don't like a completely flat shoe, although it's not a deal breaker uh, for me, how, how the shoe fits and how soft it is, you know, throughout is, um, 
important. So two things that go in the favor of the Nike, one, as I just mentioned, would be the arch, but then this upper it being completely uniform, the tongue is not separated from the shoe in any form or fashion, as you can see, um, that is all together. If your shoe were to come untied, uh, this would pro it's not ideal. It's not ideal to have your shoe untied, but the shoe will stay on your foot. You know, particularly if you're in the last mile of the race, I mean, don't let that concern you. Just keep running because this um, fits kind of tight. You have to kind of pop it up on your on your foot. So that's another big perk. I like that. I do like the uh, collaring of this. It's a very firm, taut collaring. It's obviously, this is a very neutral shoe uh, for, for stability's sake. You know, there is this heel counter. There is no support in it whatsoever. Um, but it doesn't need to be. That's not the point of the shoe. Then the... Coming over here to the um, Saucony, again, you know, very soft heel counter, not very much structure to it, which is, you know, again, that's just fine. There, if you add structure, you're adding weight to the shoe. Um, it's a semi-gusseted tongue, and they have these thick round uh, laces, which I found they held very snugly. Both shoes lace up well, no complaints there. Uh, great fitting uppers on both. Um, so, but the, the semi, the semi gusset, as you can see in there, um, this part there, that it's nice. The tongue does fit nice and flush over the shoe. There's no bunching with my socks in either of the shoe. Um, some people, if if you have a very uh, narrow profiled foot, and you know, or very narrow just in general, sometimes you can get a little bit of bunching up here on these, um, you know, unison type of design shoe where it's all just one uh, that you know, can cause some bunching and chafing, but I, I was fortunate not to have that issue. So that's, that's the gist of the two shoes and you know why it's a little bit of a challenge for me to pick between the two. Uh, if anyone has any feedback of how they found each of the shoes, um, or if you are in the market, you know, for replacing or your first time exploring carbon plated shoes, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I could help describe anything further. As far as pricing goes, why well, I definitely want feedback and anything I can do to help anybody that's looking to buy shoes. These aren't cheap. They're, these retail, the Nike, this is a $275 shoe. And these are $50 cheaper, so that could be a, you know, maybe that alone helps guide you in your decision making. So $225 versus $275. Um, you know, I did buy both of them. Um, so it's quite quite the investment. Um, I'm in a privileged position to be able to afford them and enjoy them. And I, I'm certainly going to run in them both. Both will definitely get worn out. It's just which race are they going to go through. So, you know, have Houston in January. I'll do the Grand Mall's Marathon. More than likely, that's the plan in June. And then the Indy Monument in November. Those will be my three marathons. I'm trying to give the Olympic trial qualifying time at 2.37 a stab. I'm going to start writing my sandbag excuses in Strava now because the weather is getting a little warm for Houston. For those folks that are racing, it might it's going to get into the 60s pretty quick, so it's, with, what the weather forecast is looking like. Um, so if it gets too hot, you know, just to kind of taking a turn here from the shoes, I, I would probably go down to the half. Um, I do plan to do a little video recap of the race, race weekend, which shoes obviously I ended up doing, and follow up and, and the decision why and what was good about the shoe, what was not so good about the shoe under race conditions. You know, we, we train as best we can to control all the variables of racing by, you know, our nutrition. We, uh, you know, plan our meals that we're going to eat, you know, practice with the gels we're going to consume, get all that dialed in, even the clothing we're going to wear. Shoes are part of that component, but nothing ever fully recreates the total physiologic and psychologic stress that marathon day can bring. It's a joy and a privilege always to get to race. Um, that's, you know, but it's also a challenging day in a sense. So we gotta meet our energies. And then sometimes we, we always learn something from the races, whether it be by our minds, how we did performance, things to work on in our training and then our gear selection in the future. So if you're racing Houston, uh, do sound off in the comments and I do wish you the best of luck. And I appreciate your time. There will be some more videos coming. Until next time.